Hi, this is Joni Burkhart, and I'm here to help you look at your observation in Frontline Evaluation. So right here, I have already logged in to the Frontline Evaluation, and remember, you can do that from the portal. You go to the quick link, and then you sign in, and remember, you're going to use your 5 and 3, and then you're going to use your uh, user password, and you would log in. And now you see the dashboard and you have one tab here it's called the learning plan as you can see I have a very busy dashboard going on here and remember it's broken into three parts the schedule components which we don't have action required I still need to um, submit my district SLO form so it's a waiting submission I don't have any artifacts that I'm going to submit currently because I just don't have anything so that will just sit there and there's no problem with that and I can see that somebody has done a teacher observation and I need to check it out we're going to check that out in just a second in progress I have already sent my SLO development form to my administrator and I'm awaiting my administrator acceptance and I've already done my teacher observation assessment too and I've sent that to my principal and I'm awaiting his or her approval. I can go down and view any of these things. Um, right now, though, a teacher observation has been completed. Either an evaluator from the central office or your evaluator in the school has completed this and it's awaiting acknowledgement. So I'm going to go right down here and the action is I'm going to acknowledge now I'm not going to acknowledge before I see the observation. So let's take a look at what my observation looks like. Okay, so here's my teacher observation. I am Washington County Review Teacher. I'm at the test school. My administrator is the Washington principal. And I'm going to scroll down here and you will see a difference in your observation. This gives you a much more complete picture because what the administrator has done is they have included notes and evidence and then they've highlighted where this teacher is on the framework for teaching. So here's component 1A, demonstrating knowledge of content and pedagogy. You can see the indicators. This is what's expected. You can see the four um, ratings here of unsatisfactory, basic, proficient, and distinguished. It looks like this teacher scored the basic critical attributes. You can go through and read why this is scored a basic. This is, this is the rubric. If you follow within these lines, this is usually what your classroom would look like. Now, how do I know that? Well, because I have the evidence right here. So the notes and evidence includes evidence statement one, evidence statement two, evidence statement three. This would be actual evidentiary information that the principal would write or the evaluator would write during that time of meeting with you. Then the evaluator also chose some critical attributes that describes me. I received two basics and a proficient. While these here are the critical attributes. Sometimes a teacher will have a critical attribute from a proficient and maybe two or three from a basic or maybe two from distinguished and one from proficient. That's how the rater decides what to choose for these critical attributes that are listed right here. So these are the general. These are descriptions about you. So as I scroll through here that was just 1A. I scroll through and I can see 1B, demonstrating knowledge of students. I received a proficient on that. Why did I receive a proficient on that one? Again, I can come down here and I can look at the evidentiary information. Remember, this will be filled with real information about your teaching. I can see what the evaluator said about me. These were my critical attributes, even though all of the critical attributes are listed right here. These are specific to me. And as I scroll down through, I can see 1C. 
Again, this being the component, setting instructional outcomes. I was proficient in that as the teacher. Here's my notes and evidence, critical attributes. As you can see, the critical attributes are matching what the evaluator is rating. 1D, 1E, and you can go through the entire framework for teaching. This is your observation. 1F, clearly written. As you can see, usually whenever I have a basic, I'm going to have less evidentiary information right here. And remember, you can have a basic, and you can also be proficient in some areas and still receive the basic rating. And I'm going to scroll down. So that's one. That was domain one. And then we go on to domain two. What do I look like in the classroom environment? I'm scoring proficient. Proficient. Again, I can go back and I can see what the attributes are and the evidence for that. Proficient, proficient. Looks like I'm doing a good job in classroom environment. Instruction, domain three. Looking for evidence, critical attributes, my score, my rating. Proficient. Looks like I might need to do some things as engaging students in learning. I have a basic. Proficient. Oh, and I even have a distinguished. And 3E, demonstrating flexibility and responsive. And why was I distinguished here? Well, I can see that I seized on teachable moments. I adjusted the lesson. I assisted individuals. I have six evidentiary statements right here. And again, remember, that will be very specific to the teacher. Then I look at my professional responsibilities. I'm right here. I'm proficient, reflecting on teaching. Distinguished in maintaining record, records, communicating with families, proficient in participating in professional community. And this will give you a good knowledge. If you want to go from proficient to distinguished, what is it that I need to do? What are the critical attributes that make a teacher proficient? What is, are the critical attributes that make a teacher distinguished? I'm distinguished in 4E, growing and developing professionally. I take an active role in professional organizations. I seek regular opportunities. Evidentiary information listed right there. And the last one, showing professionalism. I might work a lot with a school and I might be a very professional person in order to get to distinguished, I might need to take that leadership role. Again, notes and evidence. And then my areas of strength. Remember, I'm the WCPS teacher. These may be filled in. These may be left blank. I do have an area for, for growth. Where do I need to work on? Well, I need to work on domain one and planning. And you could see that was indicated in the scores. Um, some recommendations might be here, additional comments. Administrators, evaluators may leave these blank. They may just talk to you personally about this. And if I have a question, if I say, hmm, you know what, could we talk about something right um, in this observation? I can leave a comment. Um, could we discuss how I can grow in domain one. And then I would submit, that would go right to the administrator, and then they would write you a message back. When I am entirely finished with my observation, I have looked it over, 
I can print and keep a copy. And whenever I'm done, I need to acknowledge. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge this right now. And it says, do you want to acknowledge this? Yes, I do. I thought this was a great evaluation. I have some opportunities to improve. And I have a game plan now in my head about what I'm going to do um, to do better on the next observation and to meet the needs of the students in learning. It has successfully acknowledged And now I'm going to go back and now the administrator just has to finalize. So I'm letting the administrator know, okay, I agree, well, I have seen what you have written. I may not agree with everything, but I have seen what you've written. We've discussed it and uh, we can move on from here to the next observation. Always take a moment to look at your observations. Discuss it with your principals. We are here to help you um, to improve your teaching practices. We are here to discuss your teaching practices and really, really look everything over and um, just make sure that you understand and have a clear understanding of how your students are learning and that your administrator has a clear understanding of how your students are learning.